Hello everybody, welcome back to my iFlight Simulator 2024 series. Um, the next few videos that I'm going to do in this series are going to be on VFR flights or visual flight rule flights. Uh, first video is going to be about flight planning. Second video is going to be tracking VOR and NDBs in planes that don't have like GPS systems to do that and how to do that manually. And the third video is going to be a full VFR flight that we have planned. We'll get straight into the first one. Um, so as you can see here, I am loaded up in the Microsoft Simulator Flight Simulator Planner on the web page, so anybody can use this. Um, this is I'm going to show you this because it is a free tool that you can use, and the second website we use, Sky Vector, is another free tool, so we don't have to pay for any subscriptions. Um, so the first thing we want to do is kind of set up to plan the VFR flights. So you can see here, I am switch between your map layers. I'm going to go on. Just the standard VFR mapler. I'm going to go down these options and I will turn on VORs, NDBs, NDBs, DMEs, and VOR DMEs for these. I'll leave the rest of them off. For your navids, for your waypoints, I'm going to turn the on route and the terminal waypoints off, but leave VFR reporting points on. Um, I will leave airspaces on, and you can see you can change what altitude airspaces these show. So I'm just going to go zero to maybe. 5,000 feet. I'll leave restricted airspaces off for now, leave measuring off, leave the clouds and stuff off, and leave all of these options on. The next plan VFR flight, first thing we do is select our departure airport. So we're going to go from Echo Golf Charlie Mike, which is Leeds East. Click the airport, click Add to Route, and hit Add as Departure. And then I am going to go across or we'll do a VFR flight to Wharton. Again, click the airport. Click Add to Route and click Add as Destination. So that has added a straight line from these two airports. We'll, we'll put in our aircraft details, so we'll make sure we're on VFR or Visual Flight Rules. I know we're going to be cruising at about 110 knots, and for now I've selected 2,500 feet for our altitude. The departure, I'm going to do a out of 24, just straight out. Hit Select and OK. And the approach, I'm going to do straight into 25 at Wharton. Now we can see it's added these into our flight plan. So next we want to pick some waypoints along this route to kind of take us VFR. So you can see these little selected little waypoints here, visual reference points. So this one is a junction and motorway, M-G-U-N-N. -N. I'll select that and I'll hit add and append to route. My normal route planning I try and make sure there's roughly between 10 or uh, less than 12 nautical miles between waypoints so you can see we've got a waypoint here C-R-O-N-T so I'm going to click that hit plus and append to route and we can see here it actually takes us through this class D airspace of Leeds Bradford which I don't not really a fan of and we're going 14 nautical miles here a bit too far I'd quite like to avoid this airspace here so I'm going to hit this visual reference point here which is Dewsbury center so we can see there's a visual ring road that we should be able to see at this point I will click on the route here and click and drag it down onto that waypoint hit here we'll insert Dewsbury into the waypoint going along you can see nicely here we've got a VOR set up almost on the waypoint so again I will click on the route and drag it onto the VOR and hit POL tells us what the frequency is for POL. See we've got an airspace here but that airspace is restricted between flight level 195 and flight level 245 which we won't be touching so we should be fine flying underneath this um, airspace here. I'm going to go along and I'm going to there's a visual reference point here so I'm going to click that hit a pen to root. Again we've got not in uh, 19 nautical miles here which I'm not really that happy with so what I might do here is select I think these three reservoirs here are going to be a nice visual reference point again I will select the route and drag them down and just hit the coordinates button and it will add these coordinates we've got 10 nautical miles here 10 nautical miles here so this is a perfect kind of little visual reference point to fly between POL to these reservoirs and up to this junction and into the final. The last thing I will actually add to this route is I'm going to select this, not this one here, I'll actually just cancel that, this bit here and I'm going to add it to the WTN DME here. J 
just so we can actually have a track that takes us towards the airport. Um, so I know once I've flown over this junction, I can program in this DME or this ADF, this uh, instrument kind of programmable instrument in the aircraft to fly towards the aircraft airport so I know that I'm heading the correct way. And then we'll get visual on the airport and fly in. So here if we go on the route, it's put that route in here. And it's got our rough timings between the waypoints here. And I'm not sure why it's not letting us select the aircraft here, but anyway, uh, we'll go on to the flight details. It is VFR. We go, still not letting us select an aircraft, that's fine. So normally we'd put in our fuel and stuff here. And if we go on a briefing, it would tell us our fuel. So we know how much block fuel we need, which is 29. Not got an alternate in because we're not doing an alternate. Not got taxi, so I'd probably add another 10 onto here for the taxi. So we know we're going to need 39 block fuel. Go to the navlog, it gives us a basic navlog. This isn't the best because it's not putting into fact uh, wind components. Um, so I will now show you a second website that we can put this route in to get a better navlog. I'll see you at that second website. So the second website we're going to use for VFR flight planning is Skyvector, which you get to at skyvector.com. So here we are. We're first going to put our cruising speed in. Again, our altitude. And then we're going to put the two departure and arrival airports. So I'm going to just half screen this like this. So I know departure is EGCM. And arrival is EGNO. There we go. Again, it's added this line. Then I'm going to get as much information from this uh, flight planning, the Microsoft Simulator one, as I can. So I'll just copy this text here. Paste it into here, hit enter, it'll put in the waypoints that it knows or the longitude and latitude waypoints, which we've got here. So it's only put in the Paul, this navigation aid and Orton. So what we'll then do is zoom in here and do exactly the same thing. So I will click and drag this line onto the added waypoints and then hit the GPS button here. Dragging this down, we'll aim for around where Jewsbury is. It's going to be around here somewhere. And just check the distance. And I can cross reference that distance with this map. It's 13 miles at 235, 13 miles at 236. That's fine. Next, we're going up to Crunt, which is probably going to be zoom out a little bit. Around here, add that in as a waypoint. I will just pause this and zoom out. And we've got the pole one, this one. We've got a motorway junction over here, which we need to put in, which is probably going to be around this point. Again, hit the GPS here. And there we go. We've got a pretty similar nav map for our VFR flight here. Now, the beauty of using Sky Vector is it gives us an accurate navlog. So if I hit the navlog button here, this then gives us a, a navlog with, again, our airspeed. Uh, this has got the wind direction in it. So then it's got our track, our true heading, and what we need to fly. So this number here, so 272, is the number we would need to fly to get to this next waypoint. And from this waypoint, it's going to be 255, which if we go back to here, see... It's 235 on here, but it's 255 because that's taking into consideration the wind and the magnetic heading. Right, so the last thing we need to do is work out our altitude that we're going to fly at. So I'll go back to this. And I'm going to declutter this display. So I will take away the nav aids. Keep the VFRs on. Take away the air spaces. I'm going to go down. I'm going to put cloud cover on. Uh, it's not actually a great cloud cover uh, map, so actually I'll turn that off. And I'm looking for the cities and stuff, which is here. Turn all these off. We've just got green areas in topography. And it's hoping it would give us elevation numbers, which it doesn't actually. What I'll do is I'll go back onto Sky Vector. Zoom in and we can see there's some 2,900 
highest point in this box here, which I don't think we'll be flying over. All these are 1,000 feet, so they're not showing 2,000 feet, so I know we're not going to be flying over anything that's 2,000 feet up. So I know that we're going to be have to at least 2,000 feet, and the general rule of thumb is if you are flying right with north up or between 0 and 180 degrees, you want to be on an odd number. And if you are flying left or between 180 and 360 degrees, an even number, and add 500. I'll put a little chart up to explain this better. Because we are flying right to left, we want to pick an even number. So 2,000, then plus 500. So I know my altitude is 2,500 feet. It's fine. The other thing to take into consideration is you have to be at least 1,000 feet above the highest point that you'll fly over. So if at any point we were flying over something that was maybe 3,000 feet up in elevation, I know that I'd have to have 1,000 feet. So I'd go to 4,000 feet and then I'd add 500, 4,500, even flying right to left. That's fine. If it was, say, 4,000 feet, I'd add the 1,000 feet to get 5,000 feet. And then I'd need to be on an even number. So I'd go to 6,000 feet and add the 500 for 6,500 feet. There we go. We've got a visual flight plan or a visual flight with a nav log that we can actually use. And again, this is our estimated time between the waypoints. So 1 minute 30, 7.1 uh, 7 minutes. So that's like 7 and a bit minutes, which you can use for the stopwatch. I'll show that in the uh, full flight. I hope that's helped some of you out. Um, like I said, the next video, I'm going to do an in-flight video and show you how we can track VOR stations and NDB or ADF stations in planes such as the Cessna 152 or the Cessna 172 Basic. And then the video after that will be a full flight. So I will uh, see you in the next video.